You probably already know how to raise an error if there is something wrong in your program and how to handle that. So in this video, we're going to be taking that a step further with the assert keyword. And the assert keyword really helps us make sure that the logic in our code is actually working before putting it into production. So let's go ahead and create a few examples so we can see exactly how this is supposed to work. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and create a function called start program, which should be run at the beginning of our program. And it's going to take data of type dictionary. So this data is needed for our program to function. And if we do not have this data, our program should not work at all. It shouldn't be something that we should throw an error for because it's missing an essential Lego block of our program. So with that, we need to go ahead and make sure we actually have the data or else we're going to throw an error. So here we can go ahead and use a new keyword called assert. And assert is a very common keyword that you would use in unit testing. And it just makes sure that an expression evaluates to true. Otherwise, it's going to crash our program. So here we can go ahead and say first that we want to make sure that the data is of type dictionary. And that's so that we can pass in the JSON data and if we try to pass in a text file or something else, the program shouldn't even try to run because it's just the wrong data type. So here we want to first go ahead and check that the data type is of type dictionary. And if it's not, we're going to provide a user defined message that says that this is not the correct data type. So here we can go ahead and say invalid JSON. So this line here is already going to help us understand whether we're using the correct data type for our program. And another thing we want to make sure is that we actually have some data inside the dictionary. If we insert a JSON with no data, then the program is just going to be empty and we don't want that to happen either. So here we're going to go ahead and say no data found. So now we created these two checks that are going to crash the program if we do not have the correct data type or if we don't have any data at all. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and print loaded successfully. Now let's go ahead and try to run this. So if we go ahead and create our if name is equal to main check and inside here, the first thing we're going to do is start the program and the data is going to be equal to a string that says lol. So it's not even the correct data type and we already get that error that we're not using the correct data type, but some people might just ignore that and they might say, actually, we're going to try lol.txt. And if we go ahead and run that, you're going to get an assertion error. And as you can see, it says invalid JSON, which helps us as a programmer understand that we did something completely wrong here. And it's really good that it gives us this user defined message. And I actually want to bring up real quick that as you can see here, you create a user defined message by inserting this comma here after you create that assertion. So it's important you follow this syntax and you don't try to put this in parentheses because that becomes something completely different. And when you run the program, it's not going to give you the result you wanted. It's going to say syntax warning, and it's still going to load the program, even if we gave it an expression and an error message. So it's a really common mistake to add these parentheses, but don't do it. Make sure you only add the comma when you're giving it a user defined error message. But now we will rerun that and we will get this same assertion error. So let's go ahead and create some JSON. We're going to say this is the JSON, for example, and we're just going to em and we will just create an empty dictionary. So now we can go ahead and insert this JSON. So if we insert the JSON, we're now going to get the second assertion error. The first one is not going to trigger because, of course, now we have a valid JSON file, but we don't have any data in the JSON. So the program still shouldn't function because we don't have anything to display to the user. So we get another assertion error. And as you can see really quickly, this becomes very nice for debugging because now we understand that we have some very important logic errors in our program, such as we don't have a JSON file, which is the main part of the program, or that there's no data in the file. So we shouldn't even try to run the program until we get this sorted out. And assertions should be used for that kind of logic, not logic that can be user defined, but logic that you as a programmer are defining. You want to make sure that everything in your program that you've created works properly. So what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't use this for handling user input, but more just the logic of your program to make sure that it is actually robust. And let's go ahead and insert some data here. Now that we have a full program up and running, we can say the user is one, two, three. Now, when we go ahead and run this, the program will load successfully because we have the data 
that the program needs to run. And you can create some more assertions, of course, to make sure that the data is formatted correctly and all of those kind of things before even trying to run the program. So use assertions to make sure that your logic is working nicely. Now there's one thing that's really important about assertions and that is how to toggle debug mode and how to untoggle it because assertions can take a considerable amount of memory in your program. As you can see, this is logic being run. So it is going to take some extra time when you are executing it. And for a program running in production, you don't need assertions. These are just messages for yourself and they're never going to reach the user. So what we need to do now is go ahead and first, we're going to go ahead and print the debug dunder method to see what it gives us. And right now it is in true. And that means that we're compiling everything, including the assertions. But ideally we just want the logic of our program to be run, not the assertions, because it does take time. So what we're going to do now is manually open up the terminal and also manually run our program so that we can add some settings to our program, such as omitting the assertions. So here we need to go ahead and type in Python and uppercase O, so minus O. And here we're going to go ahead and use main.py for this. So we need to call it via the terminal. And when we run it, we're going to get loaded successfully and the debug mode is going to be set to false. Now, I also want to mention that if we go back and insert an extra O here, we're going to get now dash double O. And when we run this, we're going to get the same output, except you should also note that when we're using double O, that it's also going to omit the doc strings, making our program feel lighter because we're not including doc strings now. And if you think about it, we don't really need doc strings when we're running the program. The user is never going to see the doc strings and every doc string does take up some memory. So why would we want to make our program heavier for no reason when the user is not going to see it? So that's another good reason to run your program without the doc strings and without the assertions. It's just, it just speeds up the program. I don't know if that's going to be significant depending on your program or not, but it's definitely going to save some memory and some of the resources for the user that's actually using the program. So that can be considered a big win. But that just about covers everything I wanted to go over regarding assertions. If you feel like I missed something, do feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to read it and learn a bit more. But otherwise, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.